Hello, my name is uh, Jason J. Rock Houston, and um, I'm interviewing tonight um, Roger Langdon. And Roger, you were the lead singer from um, The Heart of Rock and Roll, which of course is a Huey Lewis tribute band based out of Temecula, California. Is that correct? Yep, it sure is. And now, uh, the, the best place, I guess, to start off the interview, um, Roger, if you could um, share with us how you first got into the music of um, Huey Lewis. Okay. I've been in a cover band for many, many years, and um, in our sets, we do, you know, rock and some dance music, oldies, Motown, even we used to do a little bit of country, and um, one of the songs we always used to do was the Huey Lewis, the new song, The Heart of Rock and Roll, oh, Okay. and um, what happened was, is uh, we played some regular gigs, and somebody would see us kind of, you know, every time we play, and he made a comment that when you guys do that song, Roger kind of sounds like Huey Lewis when he sings. <laughs> and um, that was probably over five years ago. Wow, wow. And um, over the course of time, we had uh, lost our girl lead singer in our cover band, and so our regular band kind of took some downtime, and we thought, what are we going to do? And um, my brother had kind of just said, you know what, remember uh, the dude that said the heart of rock and roll thing, you kind of sounded like him? What if we started the tribute band to Huey Lewis and the News? Wow, wow. That, that's so we did some quick check Oh, that's totally cool. So um, th this is something that you guys just kind of accidentally fell into. Now, um, were you much of a Huey Lewis fan before that, or um, would you say you become more of a fan in um, covering his music? Very much uh, became more of a fan. I was familiar with the songs. Yeah. Um, he was big when I was uh, in high school in the '80s. I'm, you know, kind of on the backside of 40 now. Yeah, yeah. And um, when MTV was starting. And when Huey Lewis and the News were going at MTV, and they were huge in videos. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Back in the back in the day, I remember. Yeah. yeah. And then when we uh, started looking into the band's catalog, because we thought, well, we knew the you know five or six big hits that everybody yeah. probably knows. How many songs did they really have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we looked into the catalog and saw that they had you know ten. Uh, I'm sorry, nineteen, twenty hits. Wow, wow. And we said, well, that's enough for a show. Yeah, and so. Um, you know, you know let, let me ask you, you know, the next obvious question, um, which I think you kind of already answered. Um, why go the route of a tribute band or a cover band um, as opposed to being in a band where you record and write your own original music? Well, as I said, we're, me and basically all the guys in the band are, are kind of on the backside of 40. Uh -huh. And most of us have made a living in day jobs, but we're also musicians on the side like a, like a lot of guys and probably a lot of guys that start tribute bands. Yeah. And let me ask you, Roger, are you surprised that, um, you know, how successful you could be doing the tribute thing if, like, uh, like in your case, like, you get the right uh, group of guys together and everything? Because, again, um, I myself have been to many of these tribute shows, and it just, you know, a lot of people have misconceptions about tribute bands, but i got to say, the um, reason I started interviewing guys like yourself is because I've been to many of these shows, like I said, and, and I, I've been impressed with all the hard work and dedication that goes on to, you know, putting on one of these tribute shows. I think you get it. It's, it's hard work and dedication. And I think a lot of reasons guys may kind of look down on it a little bit is uh, they, see the, they see the work side and kind of think that must take away from the just having fun, plugging in, and playing side. And, they, and they, they see their original stuff as we plug in and we play <laughs> and we share what we feel with everybody, which I appreciate and I understand. But I think when you decide to do a tribute, more than even just a cover band, obviously a tribute is, is going that extra mile of really trying to look and recreate the band live. Yeah, and there is yeah. work. There is work involved. And I think that goes, I mean, let's face it, musicians are not known for having a great work ethic. <laughs> yeah, and I, I so, think, yeah. 
I was going to say, I think the great thing you guys got going for yourself, I mean, one of the reasons I reached out to interview you, for simple fact, is you're the only Huey Lewis tribute band that I'm even aware of. And that in itself, I think, is a pretty unique thing. You guys really got that going for yourself because, I mean, even though Huey Lewis himself still travels, you know, and tours, uh, he doesn't do it as frequently as he used to. So you guys are feeding that hunger for this music, you know? You know, like you're saying, a lot of these um, tribute acts, you know, they're oversaturated. In fact, like like you said, you, you got, you know, there's millions and millions of you know uh, Led Zeppelin and Beatles tributes all around the world. But um, even here in Southern California, you know, I, I I haven't come across one other Huey Lewis tribute. So I really think you got, <laughs> guys got that covered, and and that's a neat little thing because um, you know, again, most people are like, oh, Huey Lewis, he's a hazard. But if you stop and look at how many hits. He, he's had it, and the fact that those songs are still played every day on the radio today, I mean, there's a fan base for that music. For sure. And one thing that's really good about the music is it's rock, but it's not hard rock. It's pop, but it's not bubblegum pop. It's danceable, uh, girls like it, guys like it. It's very, very accessible to a wide, wide range of people. And having some hit songs from a movie, like Back to the Future, yeah. like they had, helps, you know, even kids kind of go, well, I know that song. I've heard that song. Yeah, so, and I, I'd imagine, from a, from yeah. From a marketing standpoint, it's a good band to, to, to market. It's a good tribute. It's a fun show. And I'd, I'd imagine, too, um, playing, playing these tunes, um, even as a musician, it allows you to keep your chops up in the fact that you're, you know, you're regularly gigging and you're rehearsing for these shows and it must allow you to, you know, keep your musical chops up. We got, when we put the word out and we decided to make this uh, an act and we put the word out here locally, um, just to give anybody a heads up on Temecula, it's actually kind of a cool little music scene here. Temecula is right on the northern border of San Diego County and it's the southern part of Riverside County and huh? there's an area here called Wine Country, so it's Southern California. There's a couple of dozen wineries. There's a lot of musical opportunities here. There's a lot of clubs that are playing music. And so there's a lot of musicians to pull from, from rock guys to country guys to jazz guys. And when we put the word out for this band, the musicians were all going, I love it. I love all of Huey's stuff. I got a saxophone player that plays amazing jazz <laughs> that said, I love Huey Lewis. I will, I'm down. Our players were down for it. It was, it was great. Because we found out that the music itself is really fun and interesting and enjoyable. We, we became bigger fans after learning the catalog. Oh, man, that's cool. And, and um, you know, now I imagine, like, as far as your set list, a lot of the set list is um, made up of the hits that everybody knows. But um, do you have a lot of the deeper cuts and the lesser known tunes that maybe you guys are just, you know, hearing, you're hearing for the first time and, you know, you're researching the music and stuff when you put the band together? Yeah, yeah. And not the hits. And that helped us actually build our set list. 
and, and even you know looking on your Facebook page, talk about that for a minute. Um, I was really impressed that you guys got some some of these really professional looking videos of some of your performances, and and like you're saying, initially you started this project because some guy told you, hey, you, hey Roger, you sound like um, you know when you play the hard rock and roll, you sound like exactly like Huey Lewis. But then I'm looking at some of the photos of you, Roger, and. And you really got the look down. How long did that take you to get the look down? Because look at the photos. You know, you look almost. Um, well, it, it's one of those things that it just kind of happened. Uh -huh. I, mean, I, 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 you know, I just throw some glasses on and blow dry the hair a little bit and get a little bit eighties <laughs> yeah. looking and throw on a red suit, um, which is kind of the iconic look from from his "I Want a New Drug" yeah. video. That's kind of the default look I'll generally go with in a show. And um, it just kind of happened. I mean, it's, I just happened to look a little, I, I happened to look enough like the guy that from the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that. We've done some festivals where you can hear cell phone video stuff that people have sent us where you can hear people walking by going, is that Huey Lewis? Is that really him? I didn't think he was going to be here. Wow, wow, wow. Now, that's, that's amazing. Now, this might sound like a silly question, but when you're at that stage and you get in the he Huey gear, do you, do you kind of... Um, Feel like you're in your Huey Lewis mode, if you know what I mean. Um, when you hit that stage, uh, yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, my background was uh, as an actor and a performer, and, and music has always been a part of my life from the time I was a teenager. So I really do uh, try to kind of really throw myself into it and and not break character and not not kind of let on. I, I try to give people. I figure if they're there. It's like seeing the real Huey Lewis, yeah. and my job is to really show them as much as I can what a show of Huey Lewis is like. I'm a fan, and I think that's a big, that's an important aspect for a tribute band, is you have to be a fan of the music you're doing. So uh, let me ask you, on that front, have you ever seen um, Linda Huey Lewis in the News concert yourself? Have you ever seen the band, actual band perform? Not in the, not in the 80s, not in the heyday, yeah. but we've actually seen them uh, recently, I saw them in February of this year, because they played literally in our backyard at one of the uh, uh, casinos, the Pachanga Casino here in Temecula, and so they were literally five miles from us, so we, we all got to go and watch them. Did not get a chance to meet them, though, unfortunately. That's what we were hoping for. Yeah, I, I was wondering if um, through the inter internet or anything, if you've ever had any um, encounters with um, Huey Lewis or any of his representatives, do you know if any of them are aware of your band? You said you've been doing this for the last year or so, um, really getting the project off the ground. Um, how many shows have you guys done approximately in the last year? Uh, in 2014, I think we did about six shows. And, um, and with our biggest one being in El Paso, Texas, at, uh, at one of the, the casinos out there that does tributes. And at this point, do you guys um, got, a, got a booking agent, a manager that helps you book the shows, or are you kind of doing it all on your own right now? Okay, okay. And um, a couple of the guys in the band are. A couple of them do have day jobs. So me and one of the other guys in the band kind of handle the booking on our end. But we are also working with a couple of agencies that book tribute bands. And so typically, I, that's my next question. When you guys do a show, um, do you typically like do headlining gigs or do you do, you do shows with other tribute acts? Um, or does it just kind of depend on the event? And you know, you know, um, out out in Los Angeles, and you know, even Orange County, they got a huge tribute uh, scene. Have you guys ever toyed with the idea, like even um, you know, trying to get a gig at the Whiskey or something like that with any of these other tribute acts, or, or are you more interested in like doing bigger type theaters? 
No, we're totally open to any type of event that we can get a chance to play to play out. Um, like I said, part of part of who we are is, is working musicians. So for right. us, we like gigging, we like playing. So you know, we don't have to be the headliner, we don't have to be the star. We're fine right. being just one of uh, other acts. We're also trying to make um, ourselves available to actual retro artists, you know, '80s artists that are touring right now. Oh, okay. And kind of being their opening act. That, that would be cool, yeah. That'd be. We're also trying to get in the works. Because the amazing thing is, I could see you guys being able to do a show like with a Hollywood U2 or you know even a Rolling Stones tribute or something like that. Um, it's just a, all all about the packaging, I guess. But the amazing thing I see with a lot of these tribute bands is the way they kind of um, you know network together and kind of help each other out. Hey, you know, you guys want to open for us? I guess it'd just be a matter of who you could um, you know book your shows with. You know, like I said, maybe a. Hollywood U2 or something like that, you guys would be good with it. Just, I guess, depends on uh, other bands that are out there. Yeah, I mean, you know, the billing has to make sense. It probably wouldn't make sense to pair us up with, you know, a Judas Priest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Act. yeah. So everything has to kind of be the right, the right fit. We're, we're, we're really seeing it as, as pairing up with anybody that was 80s. We kind of always thought a Hall of Oats um, tribute was a good pairing for us. Journey would be a good pairing for us. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and then we can kind of market it as an act and, and a billing and kind of make it more of an event. Yeah, because I... Those are definitely all on our radar, too. Because I think right right now what it's about for you guys is obviously getting the name of the band out there because uh, and, and just to gig as much as you possibly can because, like I said, I just kind of accidentally came across your... Page, I thought, wow, what, what a neat thing, a Huey Lewis tribute. I've never seen that before. And, and I, I think if more people knew about you guys, that, um, you know, the, the band would really start to grow. Well, I, I appreciate that, and, and I'm happy to, to talk to you about it. And I, it's, it's great when people do kind of want to create that, that support network and that community of tributes, because I have found we have had a chance to uh, be involved in some events where there's been other tributes playing, and so I got to meet about a dozen different tribute bands in one night, mm -hmm. and everybody is just, they're, they're a kick, they're a blast, they're people that really do kind of get off on the whole, you know, we want to see how well we can recreate what the real band does, and we do really see it as paying tribute, and it's we're not trying to steal anything yeah. or steal thunder or take away from what they do, we're really trying to uh, honor what they do and show respect by doing it well. Well, even talking to you, Roger, I could tell, like, like you said, that you're a fan yourself. So part of the reason you're doing this is, you know, there's, there's one part, obviously, you know, you're a working musician, you want to make a living. But then the other part is that, you know, like you said, you grew up on these tunes and, and you got as much love for these songs as the people come to your show. So, you know, there's that level of, um, you know, work ethic and dedication and love you have yourself for this music. And, and, and I, I, um, let me ask you now... Um, you must get people coming up to you after your shows and telling you, "Oh man, you, you know, you took me back. You took me back to you know when I was a teenager and Huey Lewis, you know, had all those MTV hits." Um, what's that like for you? That's what it's all about. I mean, quite frankly, that's why we that's why we do it. And you know, they do tour right now. The real Huey Lewis and the News are are still out. They play. They play 150, couple hundred dates a year. Uh huh. Um, and I think that. The difference now at this point is when we do the show, we're doing them in their prime. Yeah, yeah. And so pe people are seeing the high energy version of them versus maybe now, which, hey, let's face it, we're all older. Yeah, yeah. And, you, you know, he was older now. And so he can't do what he did before. He still sounds great. The band still sounds great. But again, so what we bring yeah. you is an energy and an, and an excitement and a and a bright, colorful, especially being an '80s band, there's just kind of that bright, colorful look that yeah. '80s that the '80s were kind of known for. Yeah. So we had fans come up to us. We just we had one fan who found us on Facebook, kind of like you did. She just kind of googled and found out there was this band, and we have to be playing a gig in El Paso, Texas, right by her. Huh. She's seen Huey Lewis the News since the '80s. She has a Huey Lewis and the News tattoo. Wow. She's a huge fan. She's seen them over a hundred times, she said, since the 80s. And so we had never met her. We only talked to her through Facebook. And before the show, when we were in the dressing room, before we went on stage, we said, tonight's show is for Rose. Wow. We want to impress Rose. If we impress Rose, we know we got something. And so we finally got to meet Rose after the show. And she said, you guys nailed it. And that was all we needed to hear. 
Yeah, I mean that that's a great story, and and, and like like I said, I, I've been to many of these tribute shows, and um, I just really really impressed with um, all the tribute bands I've seen. I mean, one that really stood out to me was um, Hollywood Rose, which is actually a, a Guns N' Roses tribute. Obviously, they play out of Hollywood from time to time, and the lead singer Colby Vale, he's actually um, he was a singer for a while in Steven Adler's band, and um, he's quite successful on his you know own right, but. Um, you know, I'll never forget the time I seen this band live for the first time, and he looked the part of Axl Rose um, from back in 1987, and it was close as you're ever going to get seen Slash and Axl on stage ever again. But for a minute, I, I had to pinch myself. I'm like, am I at a Guns N' Roses show or what? They were just that good. And um, it, like you said, it took me back to when I was, you know, a teenager, and I'm like, wow, man. <laughs> you know, they took me back in time. And, and that's what a lot of these tribute bands do for, for the audience, and and um, so I, I really encourage people, any chance you get to go see any kind of tribute act, you know, um, go, go see them with an open mind, and I think you'd be, you know, equally as impressed as I was. I think that's exactly the right way to do it, is, is go knowing that you're going to go see a bunch of guys or girls that they're enjoying the music that they're playing as much as they want you to enjoy the music that they're playing. Yeah, because they're uh, a tribute because they have to be. Everybody's in a tribute because they want to be. Yeah, because to me, so, yeah. uh, you know, because to me, you could you could have any you know four or five uh, group of musicians you know uh, uh, jump up on stage and just you know you know play Huey Lewis or or um, you know Bruce Springsteen or whatever tunes. But um, the fact that you guys take it to the next level and you, you're trying to really look the part of Huey Lewis and sound like him, you know, you're putting all that hard work into that dedication. Um, it's more than just you know guys in jeans and t-shirt getting up and and just playing cover material. It's kind of like, I, I, I equivalate it to, you know, Las Vegas, Kiss, um, the spectacle, if you will. The, yeah, the, the Legends type shows where they had Elvis and yeah. Marilyn Monroe and The Doors and they had those shows in Vegas. Those are perennial. Those are always uh, hard tickets to get. They're always popular. I, I think part of the reason, too, that I, and I think the reason venues like booking tributes is because from a business standpoint, yeah. they know what they're going to get. They know they're going to get a Huey Lewis in the News show, which means I know what kind of music I'm going to hear. I know who's going to be my general clientele. If you just book a cover band, you sometimes not, you know, they may be good, they may be bad, but who knows what they're going to play. And, and again, you, you yeah. book a Beatles tribute, you, you know what you're going to get. And again, again, you again you make the you make a very good point that people know what they're going to as far as the audience. You know, like anybody that's a Huey Lewis fan when they come to your show, they have a pretty good idea of the songs they're going to hear. They're familiar with that material, so they know they're going to get a halfway decent show. As opposed to going to see a local, you know, up and coming band on the on the Sunset Strip or whatever, who maybe you've only heard their latest single, and then you you know none of their other tunes. So um, that's the other uh, great thing about uh, you know what, what you got the service that you guys are. Um, Providing it, and you mentioned, you know, like there's this um, other singer. His name is Chris Vandell. He does Steven Tyler. He he did Legends for a while, and um, he's telling me a story about um, he he got he received like a cease and desist from Steven Tyler's um, lawyer, telling him, you know, quit doing Steven Tyler. Steven became aware of who this guy was. He told him, you know, screw my lawyer. He goes, man, I love what you do. You just you just stick with what you do and you keep doing it, man. And he said Steven Tyler invited him to his house for like a New Year's party or something, and they're still the best of friends. But he said, you know, what a cool thing. I got to meet Steven, and Steven told me, oh, don't worry about my lawyer. I'll take care of it. Screw the lawyer, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and that's just. Well, I'm sure you've I know you've interviewed uh, other tributes, and I'm sure this has been the case with a few of them, but. Uh, uh, there's been more than a few cases that the original artists get word of the band and are not only, you know, okay with it, yeah. if they happen to be in town at the same time, they've jumped on stage and played with them. We, uh, we got to meet um, the folks that are in the, the No Doubt tribute band, No Duh. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. In California. Yeah. Wow. And um, Gwen Stefani loves them. Well, she that, loves yeah. them. She thinks they're great. I mean, it's, it's promotion for, for the real band, so... You know, there's no there's no risk of uh, stealing gigs. Nobody who could hire the real No Doubt is gonna hire the tribute. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna hire the real band. Yeah, yeah. You you know you make another good point there because a lot of people like like in your case that maybe can't you know afford a two hundred dollar ticket when the real Huey Lewis comes to town. You know, you guys are the next best thing, and well, if they can't see Huey Lewis, they can go to your show and at least you know hear those tunes that they grew up on and. 
you're not the real who you lose, but you're maybe the next best thing, or you know they can afford to go to your show as opposed to a real Huey Lewis, if you know what I mean. So that that's another great thing you guys are providing. And uh, right, it builds it builds a it, you know. <laughs> I, I was a businessman for so many years along with being a musician, so yeah. I see the business side of this. And like I said, no no venue that can afford the real Hugh Lewis the News is going to hire us. Yeah, yeah. By the flip side, a venue that would hire us is not going to pay enough for the real Hugh Lewis the News. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. Everybody, everybody wins. Yeah, the I think. That needs yeah. the band gets the band, and the venue can afford the real thing gets the real thing. As far as your band, and, uh, yeah. As far as your band, The Heart of Rock and Roll, I think one thing you guys got working for you, too, is besides the fact there's not any other Huey Lewis tributes right now that we're aware of, is the fact that Huey Lewis is not constantly touring himself these days like he did back in the 80s. So even there's not an oversaturation of Huey Lewis, you know, he, like you said, he, he does maybe 100, 200 shows a year, but he's not out there all over the world like he used to be, you know, back in the day. Yeah, that's cool too. Yeah, that's cool too because like you bring up the thing about the saxophone, and most people when they hear, uh, you know, a band with a saxophone player, oh, that 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 belongs in jazz or, or or classical music. But but like if you if you really go back and listen to all those you know hits they had from the '80s, you know, like you said, a lot of that stuff, the saxophone is in there, and it, it shows you just like people think, oh, keyboards don't belong in rock, you know, keyboard, saxophone, whatever, they can rock just as much as any other instrument. You know, it just depends how you play it, I guess. But um. And the last thing I want to ask you, Roger, before I let you go, is um, as far as a lot of these tribute bands out here in L.A., where I'm from, um, kind of a pinnacle, they got this Axis TV show called The World's Greatest Tribute uh, Bands. Have you ever had the opportunity to check out that show? Uh, yeah, I've actually watched every episode of it to this point. I was not aware of the show until we started the Huey Lewis tribute, and then I kind of got immersed in the world of tribute bands. And I think, uh, I think it'd be cool if you... also yeah. on our bucket list. And I was going to say, that would kind of be a cool thing. I, I think I could see you guys um, sitting on that show. I mean, they, they had a guy um, who I interviewed, his name is Kenny Mancalf. He does Elton John. He's now appeared on there twice, once on his own. And then and then uh, earlier this season, he, he was on with another guy that does Billy Joel. And they kind of had a dueling piano thing. And I thought, oh, man, it's, it's just totally cool that you can do all kinds of things with these tribute acts. I'd like to see that, and um, I just want to say, Roger, thanks again for taking time to do this. I've really enjoyed talking to you, and um, like I said um, when we before we started the interview, if you want to go ahead and send me those photos um, as soon as you're able to do it um, within the next couple days, that's fine, and um, once I get the photos, I'll send them to my editor, and we'll get the interview up, um, and it's been great talking to you. Maybe we can do this again down the line, and if um, you ever play by where I'm at, I'd like to come see the show. Um, I'm very impressed with the videos you guys have up, so um, I encourage people to go to your Facebook page. Where are you, where are you at, Jason? Uh, I'm in Long Beach, you know, L.A. area. Oh, okay. But, um, Got you. Well, we're, um, there's a couple of places up there where I'll try to get into as well, called that 80s bar and that 80s club. There's a couple of 80s clubs and bars. One's in Fullerton, one's in Montclair, I think. Uh, those areas. That's cool because I, I even work I, uh, during my day job. I, I work in Anaheim, not too far from Fullerton, so that's good. Um, thanks so much, Roger, for doing this, and um, I'll be in touch, like I said, and maybe we can do this again down the line. Absolutely, anytime. I appreciate it. If I can make one request, sure. Um, only because he, when you started the interview, you kind of mispronounced my last name. Well, go ahead. Uh, correct me on that. Uh. Langdon. 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 Okay. Th thanks for correcting me on that. Um, um, my apologies, but. Uh, <laughs> Take care, my friend. Bye-bye. No problem at all. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Thanks, bye.